Christmas morning and you've just unboxed a brand new Samsung VR device. I can't wait to put this on my kids. Then the first thing that pops up is this very ominous warning, which states, Not for use by children under the age of 13. Just like any parent, immediately all these worst case scenarios started running through my mind. I mean, we don't understand these technologies. We don't know. It could rewire their brain. It could damage their depth perception. Their brain might fall out of their head. They might one day think Leo deserved an Oscar for The Revenant. They could become a lawyer. I'm a little bit conflicted as a parent because on one hand, I don't necessarily want to be afraid of something just because it's new and we don't know a ton about it. But on the other hand, we don't know what we don't know and I don't want to expose them to things that we would later learn are harmful. Like parents used to smoke with their kids around. Oh wait, that still happens. Well, I set off on a grand adventure to discover the truth on the internet. Basically, I found there's three categories of things that could go wrong when it comes to letting your kids use virtual reality. Number one is physical problems. Number two is content problems, like things are too scary. And number three, fancy graphics go here, emotional or psychological problems. Let's start with number one physical problems. The first thing we all think about are their eyes. They have found is that there is some correlation between looking at something very close and causing more nearsightedness. So surely virtual reality would cause that problem in kids, right? But it's a little bit more complex because the virtual reality stimulus seems far away and the eye is focusing far away. So it's actually more damaging for them to read a book or use a smartphone than use this. And besides, are you really gonna let them use it for such long periods of time? that it would be a problem? I hope not. In fact, Martin Banks, professor of optometry, vision science, psychology, and neuroscience at the University of Berkeley, wow, what a title, said, quote, so far I've seen no so-called smoking gun, no concrete evidence that a child of a certain age was somehow adversely affected by wearing a VR headset. In fact, VR can potentially be used to detect and even treat some common eye problems like lazy eye. So I was thinking I was safe on the eye front until I came across this Reddit thread where a virtual simulation specialist Seriously, who has titles like these? Identified a problem with head-mounted VR systems in children as it relates to IPD or interpupillary distance, AKA the distance between your eyes. You see on the Samsung VR and most devices, the distance between the two lenses is set at the adult average of around 63 millimeters. But for children, that size can obviously be much smaller, particularly the younger they are. If this thing isn't on perfectly straight, and you're looking through the sides of the lenses, it gets extremely distorted and blurry. So unless you have one that's specifically sized for children, it's probably not gonna align to their eyes very well. Okay, number two, content problem. So obviously you gotta screen the content you're gonna show them. Don't do any of the horror content or scary things. One thing I found interesting is that they found that these are so much more immersive than anything else that that can actually cause even mundane things to seem really, really scary to children. For example, there's a really cool animated short film called Invasion where some aliens come and there's a bunny and basically one version they tested the bunny actually dies and what they found even in adults is that they were overly emotional about the death of this animated bunny because you're right there you're with the bunny standing next to him and so don't show them bunnies dying even things like thrill rides or roller coasters may be too much one of my favorite apps is this little jurassic park app where a dinosaur comes up and gets right in your face but i got to thinking about it from the perspective of a two or four year old it's probably way too scary for them so in my case i'm planning to just show them some discovery vr content where they're just like standing in the woods in alaska simple virtual reality, nothing that puts them through a deeper experience. Last but not least, emotional or psychological problems. I'll be honest, when I first looked into this, I was like, oh, come on. Well, interestingly enough, in 2009, Stanford did a study which found that when they showed kids virtual reality imagery of them swimming with whales or dancing with mice, and then later asked them, did that actually happen? The elementary aged kids said, yes, it did. In effect, they were implanting false memories into the children because it was so realistic for the children. And by the way, that was 2009 virtual reality, which if you look at the study, the imagery is extremely rudimentary compared to what they can do today. Wait, so if I can implant false memories in my kids' minds through virtual reality, One good option for kids experiencing virtual reality is actually Google Cardboard. This is much less of an immersive experience. Uh, you have to hold it to your face, which lends to, to shorter sessions. And it's just not quite as good, which for kids is maybe a good thing. It'll get the gist of it. They'll get to look around at stuff, but it won't literally blow their minds. The other nice thing is these are really cheap. So if they break it, whatever. So is virtual reality dangerous? For oh, it got dark. 
So is virtual reality dangerous for kids? The answer is no. Asterisk block of legalese, asterisk block of legalese. The thing is, it's a spectrum. The younger the kid is, the more careful you need to be. But if they're 10 to 12, you can loosen up the guidelines. The most important thing is very, very short sessions. Don't let them use it for long periods of time. Also, I won't put the headphones on them because that makes it just even more immersive. In their case, no headphones, one sensory stimulus is enough. So that's my answer, but the real question you should be asking yourself is are you actually watching this video or did someone play this video for you in virtual reality when you were a child, thus implanting a false memory, making you think you've watched this video.